Hey guys, welcome to this session by IntelliPath. In today's video, we'll be learning about Docker Swarm, a part of Docker which helps us to create and manage multiple Docker containers at the same time. Now before we go ahead with that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future updates. Okay, now let's take a quick glance at what our agenda will be for today. So first, we will learn what is container orchestration. This will basically give us an idea of what Docker Swarm is. Then we will go ahead and learn what Docker Swarm actually is. After which we will learn how to build our own Docker Swarm. And then we will learn what role a service plays inside of a Swarm. After which we will learn how to perform deployments in Docker Swarm and what are the operations we can perform once a deployment has been completed. And finally, we will go ahead and learn what controlling service placement is, where we will be talking about how we can control a service with constraints in our mind. Also guys, if you're looking for end-to-end -end training in DevOps, we do provide the same. For any other further details, look in the description below. And now let us go ahead with the session. So guys, let's go ahead and understand what container orchestration is and why do we need to use it in the first place. Container orchestration is the process of deploying and maintaining large number of containers and services for the application to run as intended. Why do we need containers in the first place? We need containers so that we can have isolated environments for our code. When we want to practice with our code, launch our code, we would need an isolated environment, right? So what happens in the scenario where we need to launch a whole application which has many, many, many microservices which pertain to many, many, many features. So we can't launch all of these things inside of a single container. We would definitely need multiple containers for doing so and even multiple services. So in that case, how do we go ahead with it? We don't want to sit down and create a single container for a single feature one by one, right? Because it would be very hard to track them, manage them and monitor them. So what happens in that scenario? What do we do? So in this case is where a container orchestration tool will help us. It will help us orchestrate all the multiple containers. So one of the main tasks of a container orchestration tool is to help us deploy our application on a large number of containers and services so that it can run seamlessly so that we don't have any issues. A container orchestration tool will help us to launch all of those containers in one go. All we have to define is what do we want in those containers. What kind of image we need to be creating so that we can have the perfect container. So that is why we need a container orchestration tool. We need it so we can deploy multiple containers and services at the same time so that we can deploy our application in a very easy manner. And container orchestration tool also helps us to manage all of these services, all of these containers. It is performed to control and automate tasks like deployments of containers scaling, resource allocation, load balancing, health monitoring. So a container orchestration tool will not only help us to deploy our application, not only help us to deploy all those multiple services and containers, it will help us to manage them also. Because when you're working with an application, you definitely want to manage it, right? You can't just deploy it and not think about it later. You would need to manage it, you would need to monitor it, you need to update it whenever it needs to be. So in that case, it helps us to do that. It helps us to deploy the containers like we talked about this right now. It will help us to simultaneously deploy multiple containers, each having their own code with their own isolated environments so that each one will work perfectly without having to fight other environments for other features for resources. That is why we use containers in the first place. So it will help us deploy all those containers. Then second, a very important task is scaling. It helps us to scale any project. Now, normally when you go ahead with scaling an application or something, you would require like physical hardware, right? So when you're working with uh, software and you want to scale and you want to increase number of features for your particular application, suppose your application has only five features but you've got funding from somewhere or you've earned a lot of revenue over your last quarter and you want to increase the size of your application you want to add more features you've got more ideas to invest in so in that case how would you go forward with it in that case a container orchestration tool will come very handy as it will help you scale your project you can't simply just create extra containers and attach them to your particular application without using a orchestration tool. If you don't have orchestration tool, you can't just simply scale your project up. But if you have an orchestration tool, you can easily just add those containers which contain the new features. 
you've added the code for the new features into the new containers and you configured the old containers to be able to reciprocate with the new containers to be able to talk to them if they have any sort of dependency on each other. In this way, you can easily go ahead and scale your project without any downtime. So if you use Docker Compose for this purpose, like we know about Docker Compose, which does a similar kind of thing. In that case, Docker Compose will not be able to stop any downtime from happening. When you want to update in Docker Compose using Docker Compose, you need to rebuild images and shut down the old service and start the new one. In case of a container orchestration tool, you would not need to do all of those things. There won't be any downtime and you won't lose any money. And it helps in resource allocation. So resource allocation can be very important because you want to make sure that each of your container gets the required amount of resources that it actually needs. Not more than that, not less than that. And over time, these um, allocations can change based on new needs, new requirements. And you can allocate the new resources using a container orchestration tool. And it helps in load balancing. So it can help divide the load among different containers and not cause overload in any one of them. And the last but not the least one, health monitoring. So health monitoring can be very important when you're managing an application. You need to make sure it's running and each of its features are running. So when you're running an application as a bunch of multiple microservices, you need to maintain the health of all of them. So if one of them crashes, you need to make sure there is a replica that will replace it. Uh, a redundancy of sort. That is a contingency. But health monitoring will let us know whether it's failed in the first place or not. And then it will help us to solve that issue. So this is why container orchestration can be very important when you're working with deployment of an application. It can help you with deployment of containers for scaling, resource allocation, load balancing, health monitoring, and etc. So guys, we learned about what container orchestration is and why do we need to use it. In the next video, we'll go ahead and learn what is a Docker Swarm. Hey guys, quick info here. If you're looking for end-to-end -end certification or training in DevOps, we do provide the same. For any further details, check out the links in the description below. Now let us continue with the session. What is a Docker Swarm? Okay guys, now let's go ahead and understand what a Docker Swarm is. Docker Swarm is a container orchestration tool, part of the Docker engine. With it, developers and IT administrators can deploy and manage cluster of Docker nodes as a single virtual system. So what is basically being said here is that Docker is a container orchestration tool. We learned in the previous video what a container orchestration tool is and why do we need it. We need it to deploy and manage multiple different containers for the purpose of deploying an application. So in this case, when you're using Docker Swarm, which is an orchestration tool, when you use Docker Swarm, you can use it to deploy and manage a cluster of Docker nodes. Now these Docker nodes will basically be Docker containers. These nodes will be their servers of their own. And you can manage all of these things together as a single virtual system. Instead of having different hardware, all you would need to do is manage it as a single virtual system. So this is the architecture of Docker Swarm where you have a single manager node and you have different multiple worker nodes which are connected to the manager node. And each of these nodes have a particular task to perform. Worker nodes will have tasks like, you know, implementing in a feature or something. And the manager node will have the special task of managing all of these worker nodes. And this manager will be handled by services, which in turn is managed by a Docker engine. So if you had an application and you had four features, all of these four features will work on each of these worker nodes and you will monitor them, manage them, update them using the manager node. You will use specific commands on your manager node to update these worker nodes if need be or manage them or monitor their health, etc. So there are important components of Docker Swarm. There are four of them. There is service, task, manager node and worker node. So let's understand them all. Hey guys, quick info here. If you're looking for end-to-end -end certification or training in DevOps, we do provide the same. For any further details, check out the links in the description below. Now let us continue with the session. So you have your service component. Services define the tasks that need to be executed on a manager and worker node. Now each service inside of a Docker Swarm will pertain to a certain thing. Now this service can define how the particular application will work what its task is. So that is defined by a service. And inside of this service, you'll have a manager and you'll have several worker nodes. Then you have task. Task 
refer to the docker containers that execute commands defined in the service. Now you have a service with three nginx replicas. So you have a swarm manager, you have worker node 1, you have worker node 2 and you have worker node 3. Using nginx as a web server, you want to create a web application. So that is the task you need to perform. And to help you perform these tasks, you'll have several worker nodes which will perform this task. Then you have manager node. The manager node is responsible for accepting commands, creating service objects, allocating IP addresses to tasks, assigning tasks to nodes, instructing a worker to run a task. So when you have a particular service, inside of that service, you will have a manager which will control all the important things. It will control how the data flows in the workers. It will control what kind of task a new worker will do. It will assign those tasks. It will allocate IP addresses to those tasks and to those nodes. And it will accept commands and service objects and send them according to the responsibilities it has. Then the worker node. Worker nodes are responsible for checking assigned tasks and executing containers. So a worker node will be responsible for two things that is performing its task and running the container. So guys, this is what basically a Docker Swarm is. It is a bunch of different Docker containers running together to help us deploy an application. And it has a hierarchy you have a you have services under which you have your manager under which you have your workers that perform all the tasks etc so it basically acts as a container orchestration tool and hence it can be very useful while deploying an application so guys that was it about what a docker swarm is in the next video we'll learn how to build a docker swarm building a docker swarm so guys let's go ahead and learn how to build a docker swarm so the first thing we do is when we are building a docker swarm is we initialize a swarm so wherever i type in this particular command docker swarm in it this command will take that instance of wherever you are typing this particular command from and make that instance into a manager node let's see what happened i'm going to come back to my instance i already have an instance launched over here from aws and i've already installed uh, docker in this so i'm going to type in the command doc sudo docker swarm init minus minus advertise minus addr and the ip address of the particular instance which i will get from the the AWS console. As you can see, I have a manager instance over here. I'm going to copy the IP address, come back and paste it. So when I enter, what, ha what will happen is that it will initialize this particular Docker Swarm with this particular instance as the manager node and any other node that gets added to this particular Swarm becomes a worker node. So I press enter. It tells me that this swarm has been initialized and the current node is now a manager. This particular node is now a manager. And to add any other workers, I will need to use this particular token or this particular command that is docker swarm join token and the token. So our next command is for joining a node as a worker onto a swarm. So I have this instance as a manager and now I want to join another node into this particular swarm as a worker. So as you can see, I have a second instance launched over here, which also has Docker installed in it. All the workers, all the nodes should have Docker on them. So when I paste in the particular command over here, the Docker swarm join and the token ID, then this particular instance will join as a worker. So let me do that sudo and docker swarm join token and if i press enter i can see that this node joined a swarm as a worker great now we have a particular worker and a manager in our swarm so we have created a docker swarm now let's learn a few things about the docker swarm so this command docker info will tell us all about our Docker Swarm. So if I come back to my manager and type in here sudo docker info, I can see there is a lot of information here. A lot of information. The ID, docker root, debug mode, registry, kernel version, a lot of uh, CPU related data, all the docker information. We have your plugins for volume, network and logs. And I have my swarm over here. This is the one I'm interested in. So swarm, in, in my swarm, I can see that my swarm is active and the node ID is this one. So whenever you join a particular instance as a node, it gets a node ID. And then this particular key is manager and its value is true, which means that this instance is a manager and it has a particular cluster ID and there are, it shows us how many managers there are. There is one over here and how many nodes there are. There are two over here. This is a default address pool also. So all of them will get the default address from here. 
and the orchestration task history retention limit okay so this is basically the swarm information over here and as we can see there is a one manager and two nodes relevant to our topic here so if i clear the screen over here and let me clear the screen over here also now i know my docker swarm is created and i know the information about it also and where to check it from so our next step would be to go ahead and check all all the nodes so if i come back to my docker manager here i'll type in sudo docker node ls now this will list all the nodes present in a particular swarm and if you're typing this command from your manager it will show you all the nodes that are there inside the particular swarm from where the manager is located so as you can see here there are two nodes over here there is this one which is the node we are inside and that is uh, the leader node it has the status ready and availability active and it shows the docker engine version running on it over here and this is the second node which is a different ip address that is 172.31.12.107 if we come back to our instance over here it's the same ip address 172.31.12.107 so this is our second node and that is the worker node and it tells us that also here manager status is a leader and this is not so our next step would be to learn how to remove or exit a particular node from a swarm so we would need to type in the command docker swarm leave force so i'll come back to my instance over here and i'll type in docker swarm don't forget to add sudo docker swarm leave force so this will forcefully remove my node from the particular cluster from the particular docker swarm so it will tell me that the node has left the swarm so if i come back to my particular manager node and i type in the docker node ls again that is sudo docker node ls i can see that the node that was here previously it shows me the new status of this particular node that is down that means it's not the part of the swarm anymore and if i want to remove this node then i would have to use the command docker node rm so let me come back here i'll type in the command sudo docker node rm and the node id and I'll paste the node IP over here. So if I type in this command, I will see that my node has been removed. And to make sure of it, I will type in the command sudo docker node ls again. And now I can see that there is only one node inside of this swarm with the ready status and its availability active. That is the leader node, that is this node. We can go ahead and make it join the particular node again by using the token command again so I'll, uh, if i just go up and cycle through the commands go to my earlier command that is sudo docker swarm join token and press enter it will tell me that this node has joined the swarm again as a worker so if i type in sudo node ls again i can see that the node has joined up again but with a different node id and it is available again and the status is ready again so guys that was it for learning how to create a docker swarm where we learn how to initialize it and then join nodes to it and how to remove those nodes also. In the next particular video, we'll learn how, what Docker Swarm Services Docker Swarm Services. Guys, now let's go ahead and see how we can use services with Docker Swarm. Now, if you don't already know what a Docker service is, basically a Docker service is used to deploy an application. Now, it does so by creating a definition for that application. While creating this definition for the application, you can mention a few details that will help you define your application. Suppose in your application, you're using Nginx as your web server, but it is not the default Nginx. It is a custom Nginx where you've made some changes based on your requirement. And you've mentioned that in your Nginx image. Now what your service will do is it will basically take that custom image and it will help you deploy this custom image based on other definitions you've given it. Now suppose you will give it a definition of having three replicas. Then your service will create your custom image as an application with three replicas in place. Now if we use this with Docker Swarm, what will happen is when we mention three Nginx replicas, Docker Manager will assign three worker nodes to act as three Nginx replicas. These worker nodes will run containers of their own in which they will deploy the Nginx application that you want. And hence, you will get three replicas. Now, how these replicas will help us is that they will help us to create redundancy. Suppose your worker node one uh, collapses or crashes, then you still have worker node two and worker node three, which can still launch containers with the Nginx image so that there is no downtime 
for your application and your customers remain happy. Now your service acts as a separate layer on top of your Swarm Manager, which helps us to deploy as the application. Where your Swarm Manager basically helps you to manage your Swarm using your Manager node and your worker node will be the one executing all of the tasks and this docker service will help us to define our application so all of them have their place the swarm manager will help us to manage all this the whole swarm and the workers will work and execute the tasks they've been assigned and docker engine client will run the docker engine and service will define the application so guys, now let's go ahead and try to create a Docker service on our Swarm. Now, if you remember from our last video, we had created a Swarm with two nodes, that is the manager node and the worker node. Now let's go ahead and add a third node. Now, if we go to the browser, you can see there is a third instance over here called worker2. This is going to be my second worker node, which I'm going to join to the Swarm. So if I come back to my manager over here and type in sudo docker node ls. I can see there are only two nodes over here, but I've already launched my third node. I'm going to join it now. So this is my third node. So I need a token for that. So for getting the token, I'm going to type in sudo docker swarm join token and worker. So this will give me the worker join token. I'm going to copy this. Make sure you have Docker installed on your third instance also. Type in sudo, paste in the command, press enter. This tells us this node has joined as a swarm, in the swarm as a worker. So if I type in node ls again, I can see there are three nodes over here and all of them active. Great. So we have a swarm ready for deploying an application. Now for example sake, we're just going to be deploying a normal in Nginx image. So let's go ahead and use service for that purpose. So the command we needed to use was docker service create replicas and publish. So we're going to be using this command. I'm going to come back sudo service create. Now I'm going to give this a name. The name I'm going to give this is new service. And I'm going to mention some replicas that have to be used. I'm going to mention three replicas for this service. So that means when I'm launching this service, there'll be three replicas launched of this service. Now I'll give it a publishing port that is 8080. That is default address of the instance is being launched at. And I will give it the name of the image I want to use. I'm going to be using Nginx latest version. So what this will do is this will define a service for me. This will define an application for me, which runs three replicas of my Nginx image. So if I press enter, let me type in docker, sudo docker service create. And as you can see, what it's doing is it's creating a service with this service ID and creating three replicas for me and it verified whether those replicas are stable or not. Okay. Now we have three of our replicas running on our docker swarm. Clear this, I type in docker swarm sudo docker service ls. I, it will show me all the services there are. Right now it shows me that there's a service called new service with the ID this one and mode replicated with three replicas with this image at port 80. So that means that all my Nginx replicas are running on all three of the Docker Swarm nodes. So if I type sudo docker ps, I can see a containers running here with the image Nginx latest. And if I check my other instances out, if I type here sudo docker ps, this will also show me a container running over here. That is new service dot one. This is new service dot two. And if I go to my third one and I type here sudo docker ps, I can see a third container sudo uh, new service dot three is here, which means that all my nginx replicas are running on the three nodes that have been inside the swarm. So if I, I have Nginx server, right? So what happens when I visit one of the IP addresses? So if I visit the IP address at the port 80, it should take me to welcome Nginx. And if I go to worker2, copy the IP address and go to the location of IP address, it will show me welcome Nginx. That means that all of my nodes have been running Nginx. So suppose what happens when one of them goes down? So I'm going to come down to my worker and I'm going to type in sudo docker ps. Now let's try and remove one of the containers or one of the replicas. So I will use the command sudo docker rm by force and the container id. So as you can see, like there's nothing over here, but if you wait for a few seconds, 
I can see that another container has been launched 11 seconds back. So what Docker Swarm will do is it will detect if any of the containers are down in a service then it will restart them or launch a new one. It won't restart them it will launch a new container. As you can see the uh, container ID is different and it launched a new container. So this will help us reduce any downtime there might be for our application. Since we have three replicas any one of them goes down the other two will be still up there and our docker service will choose any uh, our docker swarm will choose any one of these three to act as the face for the client when one of them goes down the other one will immediately take its place while the down one relaunches again so what happens when you want to remove a service so if I, let me try removing a service so sudo docker service ls i'm going to go ahead and remove this so our service is not running anymore so if i type sudo docker ps i can see that my containers are also gone same here also ps the container is gone here also ps the container is gone that means if i remove my service all my nodes become free they don't have a service to execute anymore so that what happens when you remove your service now let's go ahead and create another one so we can inspect our service so for using this command docker service inspect pretty you can inspect your service so let me just create another service sudo docker service create name old service replicas 3 port to publish at 8080 and the nginx image as you can see it's verifying whether these containers are stable or not these tasks have been executed by our particular instance is not so if I come back over here and if I clear the screen and I type docker ps again I can see there is a new container launch and this is for old service dot two now let's go ahead and inspect it I'm gonna clear the screen I'm gonna use the command sudo docker service inspect let me first list it down inspect pretty and the name of the service so after you type in the command sudo docker service inspect pretty old service the name of the service it will show you all the details about the service the service mode replicated name id how many replicas it has all the other details that you might need to know now let's check out this command docker service ps this command can be used to check which nodes are running a service so first i will get the first i will write sudo docker service ps and the name of the service i want old service so as you can see instead of going to each instance and typing in sudo docker ps to see if which container is running you can just check it over here so the ports will be old service dot one which is being run at this ip address so our ip address on the manager node is 172.31.3.144 this is this one so it's running this particular replica so let's clear this so guys that that was it for services in docker swarm we learned how to create a service in docker swarm we learned what it is in actuality and we learn how docker swarm manages different replicas when launched using a service so in the next video we'll see deployments in swarm and what are things we can do with it hey guys quick info here if you're looking for end-to-end -end certification or training in devops we do provide the same for any further details check out the links in the description below now let us continue with the session deployments in swarm so guys now let's go ahead and see how to perform complicated deployments in a swarm and what are the other operations we can perform after a deployment has been done now we saw how to deploy a particular service in a docker swarm using docker services but what happens when we want to deploy multiple services at the same time now obviously in real life applications we'll have to deploy multiple services right we'll have a db a database and then we'll have a web server and the front end all of these things we would need to deploy them together we can't deploy them separately or even if we did that it would take some time and it would be hard to manage all of it so when we want to deploy multiple applications we can use a function that docker provides us called docker stack function it basically makes use of a yaml file that is a metadata file to deploy multiple services at once so inside this .yaml file what we will mention is we will mention all the configurations 
So as you can see over here, we have given the format of how it is to be written. That is 3.3 is the format. And in the services, we mentioned two services. That is sample one as service one and sample two as service two. Inside sample one, we have mentioned the image as Nginx latest. And we have given the port 8000 to 8080. And in service two, that is sample two, the image we have mentioned is Ubuntu. So if you wanted to deploy both of these images, uh, both of these services, we would go ahead and use the command docker stack deploy. And we will use this command to deploy this and create a stack. As the name suggests, stack is basically set of different services. So it forms another layer and this layer helps us to deploy our application. So the layer will include all the different services there are. So a stack comes above services in the hierarchy. Let's see how we would go ahead and do this. So I'll go to my instance first. My, I'll go to my manager instance. And over here, I will go ahead and create a stack using the different services. And to mention those services, we need to create a YAML file, right? So first I'm going to type in sudo nano and I will create a .yaml file. Let me call this YAML file practice dot yaml and inside this yaml file i'm going to paste in the configurations that we saw in the presentation like the sample one services and sample two services let me just copy them and come back to my instance and paste them so these are my requirements and i'm gonna save it so after i've created the metadata file i need to go ahead and launch my services so to launch my services on my docker swarm I would need to use the stack function. So the command for that is sudo docker space stack deploy minus C and the name of the YAML file that is practice.yaml and the name of the stack. Okay, I'm gonna name this practice stack and I'm gonna press enter. So as you can see, it's creating a network called practice stack default and it's creating two services that is sample one service and sample two service with the name of the stack. Okay. Why is it creating so two services over here? It's creating two services over here because when we created the .yaml file, we mentioned two services. We want these two services to be deployed to our particular swarm. And that's why it's created two services. Now, if I type in sudo docker ps to check all which are containers running, I can see there's a container running with the image nginx latest and its name is practice stack sample 1.1. Now why is it, uh, why is the container here and why is there no container in my worker node? So if I type in sudo docker ps, I can see there's no container over here. This is my worker one. And if I type in the same thing over here also, I can see there are no containers. Unlike when we were working with services um, where we saw containers and all of them, we don't see any containers over here. This is because when we were configuring or when we were writing a configuration file for our services, we didn't mention how many replicas each service will have. So if I go inside my YAML file, only thing I mentioned was the image and at what port it should open. I did not mention anything else. So accordingly, the default value of a replica is one. So it's taken only one replica. So that means it needs only one node to launch this particular service. That is the manager node. It took it uh, by default. Now we have a service launched over here because if I type in sudo docker service ps ls, I can see that I have two services. One is sample one and sample two. Sample one has one replica running nginx at this particular port and the second one is not running at all. So what happens when I want to increase the number of replicas for this? When I want to scale up my operation. So when I want to scale up my operation, I need to go ahead and use this command docker service scale service id equal to replicas. How many replicas do I want? This command can be used to scale up or scale down my service to the desired number of replicas I want. So if I want sudo docker service, let me just list them all. Then sudo docker service scale. The service id here is sample one. I'm going to paste this and I'm going to say equal to three. I want three replicas of this. I want to scale it to have three replicas so that it runs on three nodes at the same time. Press enter. As you can see here, it's creating three replicas and it's verifying the stability. Now, if we head on to any other worker, suppose our worker one and type in sudo docker ps, we can see a containers running over here. 
with the name pack practice stack sample 1.3 and if we go and check the same over here sudo docker ps we can see another service container is being is launched over here that is practice stack sample 1.2 and the same with our major uh, manager repeat and same with our manager so i'm gonna type here sudo docker ps so we have three containers ps sudo docker being launched on three different worker nodes as you can see for this particular service there are three nodes over here and if i wanted to increase the size by scaling it even more i could go ahead and do that increase the number of replicas to be four and five but the thing is since i have only three nodes to work with in that case all of these three nodes will have to take up the burden of taking the other replicas right now i have only three replicas right but what happens when I have six replicas? I don't have any more containers to launch these replicas in. So my Docker manager will basically assign each of these extra uh, replicas onto the already existing containers. So let me just try and scale this up. sudo docker service scale name of the service equal to six. As you can see, it's launched three replicas, six replicas. And if I type in the same command, I can see that each of these containers, they're uh, managing two, each of these uh, worker nodes and each of these nodes are managing two containers now. As you can see, if I go to my worker node 2 and type in sudo docker ps, I can see there are two containers over here. And same with my worker 1, two containers over here. And same over here, sudo docker ps, two containers. So that's what happens when you don't have enough nodes. So you can increase the stability by increasing the number of nodes and launching your replicas on them. Now let's try another thing called rolling updates. So rolling updates are used to update an image in the service while it is being run. Now what happens when you want to update your particular application with a new software, new tools? Because you already have the old one but you have made new changes or there's a new version released and you want to update your application with it. Then you need to go ahead and use this particular command. So we're going to type use the command docker service update image name or whatever you want to update. In this case we'll be updating the image and the name of the particular service. So let's go ahead and create a new service over here. That is the Redis database and we're going to create three replicas of these Redis database and after after a while we're going to replace or update it with 3.0.7. It would be 3.0.6 in the start and we will replace it with 3.0.7. Okay, now let's go ahead and try this on our instance. So I'm going to come back to my instance. Now we already have some uh, services. Let's go ahead and remove them. sudo docker service ls. I'm going to remove these two. We do not need them. And I've removed these services. If I come back and check in my worker nodes, I see there are no more containers running because the service have been terminated. Now let me try and create this new one. sudo docker service create name redis and number of replicas, replicas three and the name of the image. I want 3.0.6 for now. I will update it by I will simulate the updation by changing the version from 3.0.6 to 3.0.7. Let me first create the service. As you can see, it's deployed my particular service onto all of my this thing, onto all of my nodes. Yes, as you can see, all the containers have launched. Now let's go ahead and try and update. We will use this command docker service update image name and the name of the service. So docker service ls the name of our service is redis so we'll type in sudo docker service update name of the image that is redis 3.0.7 and the name of the service as you can see it's updating all of my replicas all of my nodes with the new particular version of redis so if we come back to our worker node let me clear the screen I can see that the new version has been updated. 3.0.7 is now updated. The previous version was 3.0.6. Now it's been updated to 3.0.7. Nice. So that was rolling updates. Now you want to keep on rolling updates every time. So you will run a shell script every time you need to update your application. You make those changes and then you run the shell script. So this was rolling updates. Our next operation is draining nodes. So basically drain status prevents the nodes from receiving any new tasks. Now, what happens when one of your container has crashed and you want to perform, or if it's not crashed, you want to perform maintenance on it and you want to, you know, switch it off for some time so that you can work on it, improve it and etc. 
but you still want to keep your application up. You don't want to switch all, all of them because you might roll new updates, but you'll be rolling those new updates for the other nodes. So what happens when I want to perform maintenance and things like that? So first I will show you guys if I type in sudo docker service sudo docker node ls i can see all of my nodes over here the three nodes we have our manager node and worker two node and worker one node no now i want to put this node that is my worker two node under maintenance and i don't want any tasks that are being assigned by manager to go to this particular new node or this particular worker two node because i am performing maintenance of it this happens when you're working when you see a website under maintenance right you can't perform any new things on it so it's somewhat like that is this performing maintenance so in that case, you would need to change the availability status of this particular node from active to drain status. So you would do that by using the command docker node update availability drain worker one or the name or the ID of the worker. So let's do that. So I'm going to type in sudo docker ps, sorry, sudo docker node update availability and I'm going to name the availability. I'm going to put the status as drain, give the ID and press enter. And if I type sudo docker, sudo docker node ls again, I can see that the new availability of this particular node is drain. Okay. So since this is drain, but we already have a service running, we already have a particular service running on, it was already running on these three nodes. We had read is running on these three nodes. So what happened to the particular replica that was running over here? So if we come back here to our worker two, I type in sudo docker ps. I can see there is no containers running here because this is under maintenance and hence it will not run anything until it's under maintenance, until we change its availability back to active. And I type in here sudo docker and uh, ps. I can see there are two containers running over here now. That means that the load that was on this particular node has been shifted to our manager node. So this is how our drain status can be helpful. So sudo docker node ls and uh, the availability is drain. Now I want to change this back to active. So I'm going to type in sudo docker node update availability active and the name of the node. And if I type in docker node ls again, I can see that the node is active again. So that was drain and now we will see how to connect it to a network. So docker network create driver overlay and my network. This command will create your overlay network. And if you want to start a service with overlay network, we would use the command docker service create replicas three network my network name test and the name of the nginx. So this will basically create a service on our docker swarm with the network called my network an overlay network called my network and the name of the service will be test and the image it will run is nginx and we'll have three replicas so let's go ahead and try this first we will go ahead and remove the oldest service we will remove redis now let's go ahead and create our network sudo docker network create driver overlays the driver i'm using and i will name it my net so I have created a network called MyNet. Now I have to use MyNet to go ahead and launch a service with Nginx. Let me do that. sudo docker service create replicas, three replicas, and I will use MyNet. So I will mention network to be used is MyNet. And I will name this particular service as test and I will give it the engine name, Nginx latest. As you can see, now we have created a particular service sudo docker ps we have created a particular service that is working on the network called mynet now if you type in the command sudo docker service inspect pretty and test is the name of our service so this will show us the information about our service that is test and you can see here that under networks it shows me that mynet is the network being used now let's check out the next command here so the next thing we will do is we will learn how to add a network to an existing service. Okay, let's go ahead and create another service. I will change the name from test to demo add. Let me go ahead and uh, remove demo add. sudo docker service remove demo add. Because we want to create our service without using the flag network. We need to add it separately because then we will go ahead and update it 
and use the flag network add to add the network mynet to this particular service. So if I wanted to inspect this particular service, sudo docker in service inspect pretty and the name demo add. I can see there is no network mentioned over here for this particular service. So let me go ahead and add that particular service. So for that I will use the command sudo docker service update network add flag sudo docker service update network add name of the network and the name of the service as you can see it's going ahead and updating all of our replicas to be added to the network called mynet and if we inspect our service again we can see the service has the networks mynet now and if we want to remove this particular network then we can go ahead and use the command use the flag minus minus network minus rm so the same thing except of add we will use rm so the command would be sudo docker service update network rm mynet and demo add okay now if we inspect our demo again we can see that the network is not there anymore so guys now we learn how to add and remove a network we learn how to drain a node we learn how to roll out dates we learn how to use docker stack function to deploy a complicated web application or web application with different services etc and the next thing we'll learn is giving storage access now we can use the mount flag to give storage access to our particular service that is being launched on a docker swarm so let's go ahead and try this with the mount flag for volumes so let me go back to my manager node let me type in sudo docker service ls now let's go ahead and add a volume to our test service okay so for that we would need to use the command docker service create mount src name of the volume then destination and the name my service image so here it is using uh, by creating a new service altogether let's go ahead and use the update command sudo docker so guys let's go ahead and type in the command sudo docker service update the flag we need to use is called mount add then we mention the type of mount we want to make we want to make volume so then we mention the source our source will be the name of the volume i'm going to create a new volume and then i have to mention the target so inside of the container where all the data will be stored i'll store it under slash apps then i will give the name of the service that has to be updated so i'll update the test service and then i'll press enter as you can see it's updating the test service with the mount volume or the storage type volume so if i do a sudo docker service inspect pretty and test i can see over here there is a new section here called mounts and is giving me the target slash apps source new wall as the name of the volume read only false if i had mentioned here read only then it will create a read only volume and the type volume so this is how you would go ahead and mention or add a new storage type to your particular test if you wanted to create it from scratch like you were creating a service and you wanted to add a volume to that then you would go ahead and use this command docker service create you would add this flag mount give the source give the destination or the target and the name of the service and the image you would use and the same thing with bind mount so if you wanted to add bind mount just instead of volume instead of using instead of using volume type volume you would mention bind mount and you would mention the you know the source and the destination so that's it for this particular video so guys in this video we learned a lot of things we learned how to perform a complex deployment and what are the operations we can perform in after the deployment has been done so we learn how to perform rolling updates we learn how to change the status of a particular node from active to node and back to active then we learn how to add and remove connections or uh, networks and then we learn how to add storage type or add different types of storage to our service in the next video we'll learn about controlling service placements so guys let's go ahead and see how we can control our services using different constraints 
So replicated or global services. So we can use replicated constraints. That is the tasks are replicated to a specified number using the replicas flag. And then each task is assigned to a node. So whenever we use the replicas flag and mention a number, then we are telling our service to launch these many replicas on the particular service, the on the particular swarm the service is being launched on. Suppose here I'm creating a service called my service one and I've mentioned that I want three replicas to be launched. So if my Docker swarm has three nodes, then these three replicas will be launched on each of those three nodes. But if my swarm had only one node, then all of these rep three replicas will be launched on the one node. Then you have global. This type of service runs one task on every node. Example, monitoring agents or antivirus scanners. Basically, whenever you launch this service, you're launching this service on every node possible in your swarm. So suppose you want to have a monitoring agent that you want to attach to all of your nodes in your Docker swarm, then you would go ahead and use this constraint in which you would name your service, then you give the mode and you will call the mode global. Then you will and press enter and it will, you know, basically launch the particular service on every node that is available. Reserving memory. So the reserve memory or reserve CPU flags can be used to reserve a certain amount of memory or number of CPUs for a service. Now, it's obvious that some of your services will require more resources than some of your other services. So then you can use these flags that are reserve memory and reserve CPU to give them the more resources. You can accordingly allocate based on the requirements of a particular service. Then you have the constrained flag, which can be used to allocate services task to only node with certain label value. Now let's see what these label values can be. So I'm going to type in sudo docker node ls. I can see that I have three nodes over here. But what if I had 100 nodes over here? So in that kind of case, having a label for these nodes can be very helpful. If we have a label, then we can accordingly give replicas for particular images or create particular services on only those nodes on which we want them to be created. We, what if we don't want them to be assigned randomly and if we want them to be assigned in a proper manner, so we can use the labels key and assign particular services to those nodes which have the same label that we have mentioned in the constraint. Suppose you see over here, you have docker service create name my in nginx. So that means your uh, service nginx has five replicas with the constraint that these five replicas should be launched only if the nodes have the label region that is equal to east. So if I had 100 nodes over here and only 50 of them had the label of engine, uh, have the label of region as east, only on those nodes, only on those 50 nodes will the replicas will be launched. So let's go ahead and try this. First, let's go ahead and assign. So let's go ahead and try all of that. So first we will go ahead and assign two of these nodes a particular label. I'm going to type in the command sudo docker node update and I'll give the flag label add and I will give the name that I want. I will give the key I want. So I want to give this label a uh, key ID and I want to give this 1.1. So I'm giving this particular node a label of ID equal to 1.1 and I will mention the name of the node or the ID of the node. And I'm going to press enter. And I'm going to do the same thing with this particular node. And I'm going to press enter. Great. So now we have two nodes with particular labels. Now all we have to do is we have to launch a particular service that has five replicas or six replicas with a constraint that node dot labels. And instead of region equal to east, we will type ID equal to 1.1 and we will launch the nginx image. Okay. So let's try that. sudo docker service create we will give this the name my nginx then space constraint before the constraint let's mention the number of replicas i want six replicas then constraint the constraint is node dot labels dot id is equal to 1.1 and the image i'm using is nginx latest we need to change it from a semicolon to a colon two equal to sign as you can see, it's created six replicas 
over here. But if I type in sudo docker ps, I see there are no containers running in my particular manager node. Why are there no containers here? Because we specifically mentioned a constraint where the node labels have to be id equal to 1.1 and that is only possible in worker 1 and worker 2's case. So let's try it. So I'm going to type here sudo docker ps. I can see there are three containers running over here that were created 30 seconds ago with the name my engine x1, 3, 5 and if I come to my worker 1 and I type in sudo docker ps I can see there are three containers over here also. So what happened here was when I typed in the command sudo docker service create replica 6 this basically created those six replicas on on the nodes which had the constraint of labels id equal to 1.1 so whenever you want to allocate services tasks to only nodes with certain label value you will go ahead and use the constraint flag then finally you have the placement pre you have the placement pref flag which is used to evenly distribute the services tasks across nodes with a certain label value now basically if I have nine replicas and I want it to be equally distributed among my nodes, then I would go ahead and use my placement prep flag. So guys, that was it for this particular video. In this video, we learned how to control our services with different constraints. Uh, we learned how to use replicas, global constraint, then the reserve CPU or memory constraint, then the constraint for labels and then the placement prep flag. And in this video, that's all we were gonna learn. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you understood what I taught you guys. Hey guys, quick info here. If you're looking for end-to-end -end certification or training in DevOps, we do provide the same. For any further details, check out the links in the description below. Okay guys, this brings us to the end of the video. If you have any queries, leave them in the comments below and we will get back to you at the earliest. Thank you for watching.